Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for April 28, 2020, Tuesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. I remind everybody that uh, uh, tomorrow night, the Time for Change Call is going to be a wide open, it's going to be a real eye opener for many people. So, uh, I highly recommend that, uh, something that's really never been discussed or revealed to this civilization on this planet. So that's at 9 p.m. tomorrow night, uh, Eastern time on this line. If you view and you allow yourself to uh, be consumed from this this external rhetoric that this goes on. We realize that this uh, this construct that's here, in a, you know, some way, shape, form, we've all created it uh, through consciousness, through collective consciousness. We realize that it's difficult when we put our energy or our attention into something that's external because if you if you're drawn to that you leave the God within disconnected from you it's like Siddhartha Buddha when he left the palace he lived in a palace. His parents were the rulers of the land, so to speak. And he was curious, so he was drawn to outside the palace walls because he had heard uh, information from people on how rough it was on the people outside of that Shangri-La life inside the palace. So he decided that he was going to go take a look-see so he goes outside the palace walls. He kind of snuck out of the palace. And he started looking around and he started realizing how absolutely ridiculous it was that he was living the way he was. And that all these people were just barely getting by or not getting by at all. But he decided he was drawn to understand the difference between why it was he was living the way he was and why all these people were suffering. So he decided to leave all of that. And he decided to seek within himself to find out what the connection was. He was drawn to it. And so he went across country countryside and he would begin to, he learned on to meditate, he learned to go within himself. He would spend uh, several days under the Bodhi tree. Bodhi is a kind of tree, uh, yeah, mostly India, Indonesia, where uh, there's these little seeds that the tree is uh, And most of the malas, which are, they're like rosaries, but they're, they were the original uh, counters. Uh, they kind of look like a necklace. And you, some of you are familiar with them, and you use your thumb and you hold it a certain way uh, on your hand and you count the beads as you say your mantras. For each bead is one mantra. Um, so, you know, you can become a sit eat depending on how many mantras you do say in the course of a period of time. I've said millions of them. So, uh, you this is what he did and he spent most of his time going with him and philosophizing and communicating more and more he learned about who and what he was he wasn't distracted though he didn't go externally and interact go out there and and find the truth he he was drawn to within himself so we all of us we have a choice we know that Externalism doesn't get us anywhere, never has. It's a distraction. 
It's no different than what's been going on on this planet for the past oh, six weeks or so. It's a distraction. It's all it is. And it's also, from the standpoint to bolster or reinforce those of us who are conscious enough to realize that what, what, what do you think would occur and visualize for your heart mind if the majority of the civilization knew it was conscious and it fought for itself led itself and governed itself I, I, I mean each one of us what do you think how things would be right now? They wouldn't be the way they are right now. So this is also kind of a, a reflection of what's happening. And it isn't anything that you see on the surface. It is the complete transformation of a civilization uh, that houses billions of gods and the awakening, so to speak, of each and every one of us with the realization is that how powerful we are and how omnipotently powerful we are. And it is to start embracing that because many of the those of this planet are not, they don't have that Understanding, they, they 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 just don't think that they are. That they just don't believe they are. It's a bottom line. And it, you are what you believe. You you literally are what you believe. So here's a quote that that uh, that Einstein made. It's great spirits have always found violent opposition from mediocre minds. Great spirits have always found violent opposition from mediocre minds. And a lot of us don't do this. And in, in order to grow in life, we must take risks. And how many of us do that? Isn't it interesting? This is it. You can research this yourselves. But there is a uh, a study that went on uh, and through millions of elderly people, older people, you know, where the body is old. And they found that those who took risks, the older you get, the more risk you should take. But unfortunately, the older we get, the more conservative we become. Isn't that crazy? And, and we've gained knowledge uh, respectfully. Uh, or respectively, we've gained a lot of knowledge, but yet we become less risk-taking. And you see how that ego mind controls us. In order to grow in life, we must take risks. The greater the risk, the more the potential is for tremendous growth to occur. Now, when we take a bold step out of our comfort zone, we immediately move into our power. And that sounds strange to a lot of people. We immediately move into our power. So, what does that mean? The most people are uncomfortable to step out of their comfort zone. That's why you get this feeling in your heart, right in your heart, mind, where you, you, you get like, frightened or fearful and you step back. No, I'm not going to do that. I have no idea about, you know, uh, 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 I'm going to stay right where I am, okay? And this, this has an effect on our uh, expansion, our knowing. It's just only those of us who take bold steps out of our comfort zone, we immediately move into our power. We are not in our power in our comfort zones. And it, is, and it is scary for people. You know, a lot of people, it, it's very scary. Uh, who, and it's who can feel a lack of control, status quo, and become threatened. So it can be scary. 
and it can be scary for many others who can feel a lack of control and status quo and become threatened. This is never to be taken personally for these controlling people are simply pretending to be the general manager of their universe, trying to keep their life on track safe and inside a certain container. Any original thinking, words or actions could make them realize how unhappy they are inside then they must admit how small and overly controlled they truly feel inside. One of the main goals of life is breaking free from all limitations and boundaries on what we think is possible. It's breaking free from all limitations and boundaries on what we think is possible. And whenever we feel defeated by life, or we encounter tremendous resistance, remember something. And most people don't look at it this way. It's an opportunity to build tenacity, courage, and persistence. There are no failures in the eyes of the divine, the God within you. Everyone is on purpose and everything happens for a reason. It's because we are creating it, one way, shape, form, or another. Now, when we were babies, we first learned how to crawl, start, you know, stand up and take our first steps, fall down dozens of times before we got the balance right. And even though we may have landed flat on our face, the truth is, is that we never gave up. We persisted and learned how to walk and eventually even learned how to run. And this is important. <clears throat> Excuse me, if one advances confidently in the direction of one's dreams and endeavors to live the life which one has imagined, one will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. And that was Henry David Thoreau. If one advances confidently in the, in the direction of one's dreams and endeavors to live the life which one has imagined, one will meet with success unexpected in common hours. And here's where we go into no expectations, no attachments. Now, and this is important, when we say go with the flow, what it means is, is that when you're faced with things, that you unconsciously created. There's two ways to go with it, to roll with it, so to speak. You either fight it, which then creates more turmoil, more low vibrational frequencies, or you go with it. You just flow with it. Something happens that doesn't particularly excite you. Uh, you can either become uh, upset, irritated, distraught, worried, and fearful, or you can just say, hey, this is, my, this is my ride, and I'm enjoying every second of it, period. And you'll be amazed what happens. It's only when we fight that happening in our lives. It's only when we fight it, you know, we get angry. Uh, it's no different than when, you know, some of us will stub our toes and get angry about it, because it hurt, okay? And that, in turn, it's like a snowball on top of a hill. As it rolls down, it gains size and, 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 and weight. It's so different than when we, how we view things and how, well, whether you're gonna fight them or you're gonna go with them, period. And as you go with them, you begin to materialize, you move into form 
you create the solutions as you move out of them. It's, it's effortless. It, it has some effort. There are those who scratch, peel, bang, scrape, stress, pull, push, as they call it, getting to the top. Getting to the top, okay? Always in a hurry, always grappling to get to the top. And what is getting to the top in this civilization? Money, power, okay? Uh, notoriety, accolades, all contrived to the ego mind, all of it. And it is not, it has nothing to do with what's inside of you, each and every one of us. So, we look at all these people, and, and, and you know, for instance, in the beginning, you look at Walt Disney, who was fired by a newspaper editor because he lacked imagination and had no good ideas. That's a fact. You can look that up. Uh, he went bankrupt several times before he built Disneyland. In fact, the proposed park was rejected by the city of Anaheim on the grounds that it would only uh, attract riffraff. Henry Floyd could not read nor write. He couldn't read, he couldn't write, failed, and went broke five times in business before he succeeded. Thomas Edison made 1,000 unsuccessful attempts, I'm sure you've heard this, at inventing a light bulb. And when a reporter asked, how did it feel to fail 1,000 times? And Edison replied, I didn't fail 1,000 times. The light bulb was an invention with 1,000 steps. You see how you go with the flow in things? Some of these people are examples of that. R.H. Macy failed seven times before his store in New York City caught on. Louis Pasteur was only a mediocre pupil in undergraduate studies and ranked 15th out of 22 students in chemistry. Van Gogh sold only one painting during his life, and this to the sister of one of his friends for 400 francs, approximately 50 bucks. This didn't stop him from completing over 800 paintings. F.W. Woolworth was not allowed to wait on customers when he worked in a dry goods store because his boss said he didn't have enough sense. Alexander Graham Bell's telephone was struggling to get started. Its owners offered all their rights to Western Union for 100000 The offer was disdainfully rejected with the pronouncement, what use could this company make of an electrical toy? And how many people have a telephone today? You see how this goes? You have external authority. Those of us who choose to embrace the God within, and we just, we, it, none of it, it's how you view it. Because your dreams, your imaginations, create what you desire. And you have no limitations, only limitations that you put on yourself. Sigmund Freud was booed from the podium when he first presented his ideas to the scientific community of Europe. He returned to his office and kept on writing. Rocket scientist Robert Goddard found his ideas bitterly rejected by his scientific peers on the grounds that rocket propulsion would not work in the rarefied atmosphere of outer space. You see how things go? It's just amazing. Hank Aaron went zero for five his first time at bat with the Milwaukee Braves. Stan Smith was rejected as a ball boy for a Davis Cup tennis match because he was too awkward and clumsy. He went on to clumsily win Wimbledon in the U.S. Open in eight Davis Cups. 
Tom Landry, Chuck Noll, Bill Walsh, Jimmy Johnson accounted for 11 of the 19 Super Bowl victories from 74 to 93. To 93. They also share the distinction of having the worst records of first season head coaches in NFL history. They didn't win a single game. John Unitas, some of you may remember him, first pass in the NFL was intercepted and returned for a touchdown. Joe Montana's first pass was also intercepted. Charles Schultz had every cartoon he submitted rejected by his high school yearbook staff. Oh, and Walt Disney wouldn't hire him. Charles Schultz, the, you know, the creator of Peanuts. After Fred Astaire's first screen test, the memo from the testing director of MGM dated 1933 read, can't act, can't sing, slightly bald, can't, can dance a little. He kept that memo over the fireplace in his Beverly Hills home. Fred Astaire once observed that when you're experimenting, you have to try so many things before you choose what you want, that you may go days getting nothing but exhaustion. And here is the reward for perseverance. The higher up you go, the more mistakes you're allowed. Right at the top, if you make enough of them, it's considered to be your style. And after his first audition, Sidney Poitier was told by the casting director, why don't you stop wasting people's time go out and become a dishwasher or something. It was at that moment, recalls Poitier, that he decided to devote his life to acting. When Lucille Ball began studying to be an actress in 1927, she was told by the head instructor of the John Murray Anderson Drama School, try any other profession. The first time Jerry Seinfeld walked on the stage at a comedy club as a professional comic, he looked out at the audience, froze, and forgot the English language. He stumbled through a minute and a half of material and was jeered off stage. He returned the following night and closed his set to wild applause. After Harrison Ford's first performance as a hotel bellhop in the film Dead Heat on a merry-go-round, the studio vice president called him into his office. Sit down, kid, the studio head said. I want to tell you a story. First time Tony Curtis was ever in a movie, he delivered a bag of groceries. We took one look at him and knew he was a movie star. Ford replied, I thought you were supposed uh, to think that he was a grocery deliver boy. Vice President dismissed Ford with, you ain't got it, kid. You ain't got it. Now get out of here. You see what happens... And it goes on and on. Woody Allen, Michael Caine, Charlie Chaplin. Uh, Decca Records turned down a recording contract with the Beatles with the evaluation, we don't like your sound. Groups of guitars on their way out after Decca rejected the Beatles for Columbia Records followed suit. It just, you know, Beethoven, Lee Tolst Leo Tolstoy, Louisa May Alcott, Emily Dickinson, Jack London, Richard Hooker, Dr. Seuss, 27 publishers rejected Dr. Seuss's first book to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. We can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. It's another Albert Einstein. We go on and on in this life, and it all boils down to one thing. It is our journey with him. It is the God that we meet as we journey. It is eliminating the ego mind. It is our main and most major obstacle that stops us from enjoying our true natural state of being, which is bliss, joy, happiness, prosperity, wealth, abundance, wonderful health, opportunity after opportunity. We were all taught that you're supposed to strive, bang, scrape, push, pull through this life to achieve anything that's great. And in eventuality, when we, when we surrender, all of those ego, mind-driven parts, we begin to embrace with ease as we are floating down the river, going downstream with the current in a boat with no oars, and we don't have a care in the world. We have no expectations. We have no attachments. 
and we're in that boat, and we're just going downstream. And wherever it takes us, it takes us. Because we know that wherever we end up coming on shore or docking somewhere or going aground, that the unknown is where all the possibilities are. It's where all the opportunities are. And they've been, they've been sent to us on a continual basis, nonstop, forever. The universe sends us this stuff all the time. And we talked about yesterday in our meditation about uh, roadblocks. What is perseverance? Perseverance. Is there such thing as giving up? Really, seriously. Is there? Or is it just in this matrix that we believe? Do we ever really give up? You know what giving up is? It's leaving the body. That's what giving up is. And as long as we're moving forward and we're in the, we've chosen, each and every one of us, in our own way, in our own direction, to embrace the God within us, it becomes a whole new different existence. A whole new different existence. And when we understand the ego mind and we understand what its function is, it become, you become more empowered. You become more clear. You become more conscious. And as you step, step by step, one foot in front of the other, you begin to realize that you are the navigator. You're the, you're the director. You guiding yourself, the God within you, is right next to you, walking with you. Think about that. The God within walks with each and every one of us. Every day. Every moment. And isn't it ironic that we feel that we're alone, that we don't like being alone? And the reason that is, is because when we are, when we are, wherever it may be, we spend most of ourself, most of our time, external thinking. That's what we do. We don't once, we don't ever think that when we have this this void that comes in through the ego mind. I'm lonely. I'm so lonely. I don't want to. We go within. And we find that we've never been alone. We go within. And it's interesting because as you get to know yourself more and more, all of these relationship avenues open up for you. It's like fighting something, fighting your natural state of being. Fighting to be in bliss, fighting to be in joy, against it, fighting against being in bliss and joy, struggling every day to fight yourself, fearing that the love, with it, fearing that you're going to find out that you're the love, okay? fearing also that you're the bliss. And then that sounds strange. But it's true in many instances with many of us that we actually fear the very thing that we desire. And unfortunately, the very thing we desire, we keep thinking is out there and it never has been. It's always been within us. So we go through this life and you can see why a lot of us create a life that is so bumpy. And I'm not saying everybody's life is bumpy. I'm saying that we all generate direction and materialize things uh, through our intent, whether conscious or unconscious, that creates the bumps. The unknown is always where, always, the unknown is always where we will find all the opportunities, all the wonderment that we could possibly imagine. It's where they all are. And so many fear the unknown. Okay? And this is part of letting go. It's like some people say, why don't we do this? No, I don't know. I'm not really keen on that. They say, well, have you ever thought about trying this? No. I had a conversation a couple of days ago with a lady 
uh, who's in the oil and gas industry. And I asked her, I said, what's your joy? What's your, what, what is your real joy? And she said, well, I just love, I love growing my own food and preparing it and eating it and, and others, you know, with my family. I really enjoy that. I said, you're 40 years old, you could go, you could go be a chef. You get uh, education and become a chef. And, she said, and then, of course, the ego comes in, ego mind. Oh, yeah, but, you know, I've got two boys, two young boys, and, you know, it'd be, I, I just don't think I would want to prepare food for other people. You see how it works? We, we trash the very thing that we know we enjoy doing. And then we get frightened and say, oh, I couldn't do it for a living. I just couldn't do it for a living. How about doing it because you enjoy it? That's it. Go with the flow. See where it takes you. So, we are never alone. We are never alone. We are never without. And the God within us walks with us every split second. The God within us sleeps with us every second. The God within us laughs with us, cries with us, smiles with us. He's always there. Always has been. So the God within us walks with us. The God within each and every one of us walks with us. And I mean that literally, not figuratively. So if you will, we'll go to the place where we're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are. And the first thing that we want to do is relax our bodies. Let it go. Let your worries, your stresses, your fears, your anxieties go. Surrender them. Let them go. Give them to your God. You say, hey, God, here, I don't really have any use for these. I'm letting them go. I'm surrendering to you. And you know what you're surrendering to? The bliss, the joy, the love that you are. So let them go. Let's just be done with them. Lovingly, softly, easily, they serve you no good, period. They never have. If you let them just fall off, fall away, and vaporize, you know, it's like poof. You know, it's like that magician paper where they're doing a trick and they, it flashes up that paper. It just goes up in smoke. It's a flame, real quick flame, and then gone. And body will relax. You let go, you drop the shoulders. Let it all pour right off of you. And so as you do this, we move into the now. The now is what we have, is all we have. We don't go in the past. We don't go in the future. Everything is in the now. The space between heartbeats, the now, the moment. Now, we don't care to go in our past, which is seductive at times, memories, reminiscing. And we go into the past, and many of us will take the past, which is gone and dead. We take the past, we bring it into the future, and we, with the past, we create our future, and we end up reliving our past in the future. You think about that now. All of it. We relive it. I don't care to do that. So in the now, what are we all doing in the now? We're creating our future. We're literally creating our futures. So when you're cognizant of that, you're very conscious about it. It's a very enjoyable thing because as you become more knowledgeable and you're more conscious, you start drawing it. You start painting your future. And don't think it will not materialize. It, don't think it won't come into reality, because it will. With your intent on writing it and designing it, you're moving energy into form. 
that the only way you will not experience it is if you step in front of your own way and you stop it. And then you've got a miscombobulated experience in the future. So we're creating our future in the now. We're also stilling the mind. And we all have chatter. We all have noise. None of us are exempt from it. And the noise sometimes gets incessant. And we have the ego mind, and we have the subconscious mind. And then you can go into all of the other analysis, the super id, the super ego, all this stuff. I, I just choose to go into the plain vanilla avenue that it's the ego mind. that stops us. And when we still the mind through the now, because all you're doing is, is you're concentrating on the now. What you're doing in that moment. See, because you don't wander off when you're in the now. When you're focused on the now, you're not wandering off into the past or future. You're only in the moment, in the now. Because guess what? It really is all we have. Because you don't know, you don't know if your body says we're done and you leave it. You don't know. You have no clue. Okay? Because we've been so detached from ourselves for so very long that we don't have the understanding So now, we've relaxed the body and in the now, what we want to do is breathe. You breath in through the nose and breath out through the mouth. And our breath is so powerful. It relaxes us, it calms us, it balances us, it helps us focus, it helps us immensely with the journey within. Lowers our blood blood pressure, de-stresses us. Just just breathing and and acknowledging our breath. So as we breath in, visualize in your heart mind. You, it's very easy. You bring it in through your nose and you view it, and it starts up through the sacral chakra, your groin area. It comes up through the sacral chakra. It goes up to the center through all your chakras, up into the heart chakra, throat chakra, up into the third eye and the crown chakra. Now, as you pull this breath and you feel it coming up through the center of you, and you, you bring it in under your skull cap, right above the pineal gland, and you hold it, you sustain it, you compress it. And for about three seconds, I am light, I am love, I am. I am power. I am peace. However, for those three seconds, you're compressing that frequency, that energy, that breath. And you condense it into pure liquid energy. And as you do this, you release it over the pineal gland. And the pineal gland, from being, from a prune, to a full blooming flower. It expands, it is ignited, it is engaged, and it is our gateway to all the particles of existence. It is our gateway to pure consciousness and our gateway beyond consciousness. So we do this repeatedly at least six times. Visualize this, bringing it up through the center of your chakras, through the body, and up over into the skull cap underneath it, right over the pineal gland, condensing it into pure liquid energy. It's a frequency. And then releasing it over the pineal gland where it then is saturated. Now, we have the ego mind. We all know that. So the ego mind obviously is there, and we address it. You say, ego mind, you are not in charge here. I am. 
So please take a seat. You do this with confidence through the ego. You do this with consciousness through the heart mind, without negativity, without anger, without stress. Just easy, and watch what happens. And it's in set, and, and it's persistent. So it come back, come back, come back, come back. You do the same thing over and over again. And before long, you'll be on autopilot with the ego mind. You'll know when, and it will eventually not appear again. So we're all one. We're the one. We're all together. Our gods are with us, each and every one of us. So we have the God, the body, the heart, mind, all one. We are consciously aware that we have, we are of the highest, deepest, eternal love, and from the highest, deepest, eternal love, and the highest, deepest, eternal gratitude. We have others with us. We have the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, and the archetypes. Many, many of the many trillions. They're a civilization that, that vibrate at a different frequency than we do. And they're always helping us, assisting us. Just like you would help a best friend or a loved one. Just like you'd help a stranger. Just like you'd help anybody. They do the same thing. They have no boundaries or restrictions on who they're going to help and who they're not. As many as 60,000 can surround any one of us. They, 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 they're housed because of their frequencies. They can take up a small amount of space in massive numbers. They appear sometimes in humanoid form. When, you least, when you're not expecting anything, you're just going about things, you know, meandering around this life, and all of a sudden there's one of them. They stare at you with a blaze, and they come up with a statement that you can tell comes right from their heart center, and then they're gone. We have the Ascended Masters. Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Sananda, Jesus, El Moria, Abundantia, Pell, Thoth, many, many, many more. And with the angels who we love and they love us, it's the same with the ascended masters. We love them, they love us. They've mastered ascending out of body, physical form. And they hold God form. What is God form? It's pure consciousness. And why is it that we have this brilliant light within us? Because it's the highest frequency of deep eternal love of which we're made of. We're made of love. That's the light. That's what generates that brilliant white light. Love. We, we, with our light, with, with our gods, we ascend into body to experience physical form. Then, consciously, we design that life for ourselves. How we wish to exist in these bodies and what we wish to experience. And then throwing in a little bit of unknown. And they're consciously aware that they're of the highest, deepest, eternal love from the highest, deepest, eternal love and the highest, deepest, eternal gratitudes. So here we are, all three of us, all three groups. And we're compelled to come together. So arm in arm, hand in hand, we immediately form a circle of light, a halo, uninterrupted, one piece, no seam. No connectors, all one. And we, we don't have physical form, we have the light. We have source creator light. Or as we would call it, the light of our God. The love. The purity. 
the bliss, the joy. All inside each and every one of us. And so, as we form this, the, the light that it emits is so powerful and so brilliant, it grays out the darkness of space, and it, our, the, the sun in the solar system is so dim compared to it. This is not a light you will see on this planet. It's not a flashlight light, not a floodlight. It's much different. So we all begin to float up above the planet, levitate, ascend. As we do this, we come into a gossamer field. It feels everywhere. And it's filled with brilliant, vibrant, reflective, glittering colors. You can feel its essence and its energy. Its frequency is super high. And we see the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column to remind us that we are the healing power. Each and every one of us are. We have the violet, blue, purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column that reminds us of our power, our strength, and our resolve. We have the white fire, our armor. And the white fire is our high frequency that we maintain. It's our love, it's our joy, it's our bliss, it's our happiness, it's our peace, it's our gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, benevolence, tranquility. It is our essence. And the only way that we can compromise it is if we choose to go into the lower dark matter frequencies. And when we go into those low frequencies, the white fire diminishes. And it opens up for the lower dark matter frequencies to come in. We have the purple transmuting flame. This is a column that reminds us is that this does happen. We can bring in the purple transmuting flame. And we can literally transmute all of those lower dark matter frequencies into neutralized substance. We send them back to pure consciousness. What does pure consciousness do with it? It's absorbed, cleansed, balanced, and harmonized. And it becomes part of the one. We also have the violet ray. It is a column that reminds us that we bring on our violet rays and we can bring them right in where the purple transmuting flame was and we can balance and harmonize and lift those frequencies in that part of us into higher vibration and then the field, the fire, the white fire, our armor is restored. We, we have the golden white pink light. This is a column that reminds us that we are the love. And we are the joy and the bliss and the peace and the benevolence and tranquility and gentleness and kindness. Now, we continue, as we continue to levitate, levitate, those of us holding physical form, we just step outside our bodies and float above ourselves effortlessly. As we do this, we call out to all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. Only those who are of the highest, deepest, eternal love from the highest, deepest, eternal love and the highest and deepest, eternal gratitude can join us in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of light. They're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, Humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, and benevolence. And they come. They come in the billions. They come in the trillions. They come in the Googleplexes. One Googleplex will fill this universe. Visualize that. They come in the trillions of Googleplexes from every direction. Arm in arm, hand in hand, their gods with our gods, our gods with theirs. Arm in arm, hand in hand, they're with us in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of light. 
They are of the highest, of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest, of deepest eternal love. And we are the one. We are in the highest, of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest, of deepest eternal love. And we are the love. We are the God. And our God light energy is absolutely everywhere, and it continues to intensify, and it continues to expand. We call upon all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, agartha, beneath earth, many, many, many civilizations. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and the highest of deepest eternal gratitude and love from the highest of deepest eternal love and the highest of deepest eternal gratitude. They're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, generosity, gentleness, kindness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, and benevolence. And they come in the billions, arm in arm, hand in hand. Their gods with our gods, our gods with theirs. They are with us in this now, in this meditation, this circle of life. They're the highest and deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest and deepest eternal love. We are of the highest and deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest and deepest eternal love. And we are the one. We are the love. We are the God. And our god light energy is absolutely everywhere, and it continues to intensify, and it continues to expand. We call upon all the galactics, all the off-worlders, many, many, many civilizations, just to name a fraction of our familiarity with them, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, the Pleiadians, and the Syrians. Many, many, many more. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest and deepest eternal gratitude. Can be with us in this now, in this meditation, this circle of light. They're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, and they come arm in arm, hand in hand, their gods are with our gods, our gods are with theirs, in the billions. They are with us in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of light. They are of the highest and deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest and deepest eternal love. We are of the highest and deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest and deepest eternal love. And we are all one. And we are the God. And we are the love. And our God light energy is absolutely everywhere. And it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. We call upon all of our loved ones, all of those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. And only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest of deepest eternal gratitude can join us in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of life. They're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace benevolence, tranquility, and they come in the billions, arm in arm, hand in hand, their gods with our gods, our gods with theirs. They are of the highest and deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. We are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. 
And we are the one. We are the love. We are the God. And our God light energy is absolutely everywhere and it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. We call upon all the light energy beings who have decided to be housed in the following forms on and above and below this planet Earth, Gaia, in this now, in this meditation, in this circle of light. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest and deepest eternal gratitude can join us in this now, in this meditation, this circle of light. Just to name a fraction of them, the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the dwarves, the gnomes, the trees, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur, many, many, many more. They're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, and benevolence. And they come, arm in arm, hand in hand. Their gods with our gods, our gods with theirs. They are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. We are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. And we are the one. And we are the God. And we are the love. And our godlike energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. And understand that they come in the trillions. Color, shapes, sizes, forms, configurations of many of which we've never seen before. They are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. We are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and the highest of deepest eternal love. And we are the one. And we are the love. And we are the God. And we continue to intensify. And we continue to expand. We look up and we see our meditative sphere. It sits center circle. We created this sphere over two years ago. It holds all of our meditations in perpetual motion. Over 800 meditations, all in perpetual motion, all of the highest and deepest eternal love and gratitude, of the highest and highest highs of frequencies, pure love. And that's why this fear can be seen, heard, and felt, and all that there is ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. It is shifting this entire solar system in this quadrant of the galaxy. It floods all of us constantly, eternally, head to toe, inside and out, both our physical and etherical bodies. It bathes us, floods us in pure, deep, eternal love. And the God within each and every one of us walks with us. We also see this massive column that we created, larger than this solar system. And it is constantly water falling 360 degrees from its peak over all of us, over Gaia, on, in, above, and below, around, everywhere. This golden, liquid, pure, deep, eternal love light energy is bathing us all. We look down upon this planet Earth, Gaia, and we see this golden waterfall literally flooding, saturating, bathing everything, all life, all things, all of our brothers and sisters. Life is the highest value in the universes. 